Welcome to Checking Your Reserve Pay, Part 5, A Beginner's Guide to Verifying Your Multi-Day Per Diems. My name is Jesse Matthews. I am the Local 4094 Reserve Committee Chairperson. Just a quick disclaimer as always, this presentation is for educational purposes only. If there is any discrepancy between this presentation and the Collective Agreement, the Collective Agreement will take precedence. If there are any errors or omissions from this presentation that you would like to bring to my attention, you can reach out at reserve at local4094.ca and I'd be more than happy to read those and implement them as applicable. With that, let's get on uh, to our presentation for today. So just briefly revisiting the calculation of per diems, uh, all of our meal allowances aka per diems, are calculated using Article 7.02 in the Collective Agreement. I have indicated the relevant portion here on the left side of the screen once more. This indicates the uh, meal periods for any of our non-overseas um, pairings. And then we also have the dollar amounts for Canada and US meal allowances uh, throughout the entire 10-year collective agreement that we presently have. In the paragraph just beneath the table, it is noted that the US meal allowance is the exact same number but in US dollars. So that gets converted to Canadian dollars and the final amount is shown on the updated meal allowances PDF. Uh, this is uploaded every month. That goes into our second bullet point. Each block month, a new PDF with meal allowances for all locations is uploaded to Aeronet. Generally speaking, uh, it is just the US line that changes on the um, PDFs every month. Uh, there is a small exception, and we can see that in 7.02.03. Uh, basically, when the company and the union discuss uh, reasonable cost for meals at certain locations, uh, this can be adjusted when there is a 5% change regarding um, cost of meals, and this is based on a six month running average. One little caveat, you can never make less as far as your per diems than what we make uh, as far as Canadian rate goes. So uh, at minimum, it would be the Canadian rate and that's all the numbers that we see in the table above. This is an example of a meal allowance chart. Uh, in a previous presentation, I have broken down each column and what it represents, but essentially you can see uh, what the per diems are for each location that we fly to or have recently flown to, as in some cases, some of these destinations are not destinations we presently fly to. Mystery of meals document, uh, just a quick overview on this. This document uh, is supplemental. It was issued in 2008 uh, to assist in calculating our meal allowances as uh, some of the contractual language uh, wasn't entirely clear in specific situations. Uh, overseas per diem calculation is one such example. Uh, this document is based on past memoranda of agreement between the union and the company to completely clarify how per diems are calculated and uh, which meals are boarded in the case of overseas flights. This has been broken down in detail in some of my previous uh, presentations, so we will move on to the next slide. So today's video topic is calculating per diems for multi-day pairings. I have gone over uh, checking meal allowances for domestic pairings, which don't involve Canada and the US on multiple days. Um, I've gone over overseas pairings, but I haven't gone over multi-day pairings that also happen to have uh, US um, stopovers or even layovers in part of the pairing, but not the entire pairing. So hence the idea for this particular video. 
The very first thing we want to do is the same as we would do for a domestic pairing, and that's uh, determine the first per diem that we are eligible for, and then ultimately the last per diem that we are eligible for. So what we do is we use the departures portion of the mystery of meals, or it would be Article 7.02 in the collective agreement. And the departures column helps us figure out the first eligible per diem in our pairing. So it's going to be this section right here. We need to use actual departure times and not blocked times. So in this case, um, on my first leg, Vancouver to Montreal, I departed precisely on time, and that was at 4.55 p.m. So if we go through the list showing in the mystery of meals, in order to get a breakfast per diem, I must depart before 8 a.m. That did not happen, so I am not eligible for this meal. I also did not depart before 12.30 p.m., so I'm not eligible for this meal either. I did, however, depart before 6 p.m., and I was on duty from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. So I am eligible for this per diem, and I am by proxy eligible for the snack after that, and so on and so forth. But the dinner per diem is the first I'm eligible for, and that's for day one. So let's just start writing some of this in here. So day one, I'm just going to abbreviate them. So let's put dinner and snack. So that was for December the 9th, day one of my pairing. My pairing goes all the way up until December the 11th. So there is an entire day, December the 10th, where I am away from base. And then December 11th is the day I return to base. So for day two, I am away from base for the entire day. very much still in my pairing. So I am eligible for all four of the per diems. So that would be breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. And then we get to day three. And this is the day where I return to base. So now it's time to use the arrivals column in the mystery of meals PDF to figure out the last per diem I'm eligible for in this pairing. So the last leg is San Francisco to Vancouver to get back to home base. I need to arrive after 9.30 a.m. and be on duty from 8 to 9.30. That is true, so I am still eligible for breakfast. I need to arrive after 1.30 and be on duty from 12.30 to 1.30 in order to get a lunch per diem. And that is also true. To receive a dinner per diem, I need to arrive after 6.30 and be on duty from 5 to 6.30. My actual arrival time back to base is 8.07 p.m., so that is true as well. For a snack per diem, I'd need to arrive after 1 a.m. and be on duty from 11 to 1 a.m. That is not true. So on that basis, my last per diem would be dinner on day three. That means I am eligible for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So day one, dinner was the very first I was eligible for. Day three, dinner is the last I am eligible for, and then everything in between was filled in. 
So that's only half the battle. <laughs> We're going to get on to the next portion here, now that we are aware of which per diems in general that we are entitled to. So the next question is US or Canadian rate? We have two sets of timing criteria that we use in conjunction with the meal allowances chart to help us figure out uh, which rate we should be getting paid our per diems at. Just like with calculating our per diems in general for a pairing, the easiest method to figure out which rate we're entitled to is to determine the first and the last US per diems and then fill in any of the other US per diems in the middle after determining the first and the last. So I've removed day one of the three days from the globe pairing that I had showing over here because day one was Vancouver to Montreal and that's of course all domestic. Just as a reminder so that we don't forget, I'm gonna write it back in so you can all see. Day one, we had dinner. And I'm putting Canadian right in brackets and snack also at Canadian rate. I'm probably going to need more space for day two, given that there's four. So let's put that over here. Okay. So on day two, that's December the 10th, Montreal to San Francisco was the flight that happened. So we know that we're entitled to all four of the per diems on this day. That's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. The question is which ones are going to be Canadian and which ones are going to be US. So that's where we use the Canadian or US portion of the mystery of meals document. Whenever we are on a layover, so that is we're not in the air, we are always paid at the layover rate. Immediate rule to keep in mind is breakfast is always paid at the rate of the country of departure. So with that logic in mind, we immediately know that breakfast is going to be Canadian. I'm just going to put a C in brackets. I don't think I'll write the whole acronym or abbreviation, pardon, this time. So then lunch, the criteria for Canadian or US rate indicates if a flight departs prior to noon, lunch is paid at the rate of the country of destination. Otherwise, if it departs at noon or later, lunch is paid at the rate of country of departure. So this flight definitely departs uh, after noon so we would be getting paid at the country of departure. And in this case, Montreal is in Canada, so lunch would also be paid at the Canadian rate. For dinner, if the flight departs prior to 5.30, then dinner is paid at the rate of country of destination. If the flight departs at 5.30 or later, dinner is paid at the rate of the country of departure. So this is 6.21 p.m. And that means in this case that dinner is paid at the rate of the country of departure. So that would be a Canadian dinner as well. Finally for snack, if the flight departs prior to 10.30, snack is paid at the rate of the country of destination. Otherwise, if the flight departs after 10.30, but prior to 12.59 a.m., snack is paid at the rate of the country of departure. 
So in this case, 6.21 p.m. is quite clearly before 10.30. So a snack is paid at the country of destination, and in that case, that would be the U.S. So for all four of the expenses that we already knew we were going to get, which were breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack, three of them are Canadian and one of them is US. And now for day three, that's December the 11th. So we know that layovers are always paid at the layover rate. And we also know that breakfast is always paid at the rate of the country of departure. So that tells us immediately that breakfast is going to be paid at the US rate, regardless of what time that flight were to actually depart back to Vancouver. So it's US breakfast. And then again, if we go to lunch, if the flight departs prior to noon, lunch is paid at the rate of country of destination. Otherwise, if it departs at 12 or later, lunch is paid at the rate of country of departure. And with a 5.55 departure, this is paid at the US rate. So lunch will also be marked as US. And then finally for dinner, if flight departs prior to 5.30, dinner is paid at the rate of country of destination. If it departs at 5.30 or later, dinner is paid at the rate of country of departure. And the flight back to Vancouver departs at 5.55. So in this case, it is once again paid at the rate of the country of departure. And we know from the previous slide that dinner was the last per diem that we were entitled to for this entire pairing. So our checking stops there. So to recap, um, we knew that we were entitled to dinner as our first per diem for the pairing on day one. And our last per diem on day three for the whole pairing was dinner as well. And on this slide, we broke down whether it was the Canadian or the US rate that we were entitled to. And that's based on the actual times of departure and arrival. And that's not blocked times. So sometimes that means that we are entitled to per diems or entitled to a US or Canadian rate that wasn't showing in the initial schedule for the pairing and it's important to go back and check because uh, when you're entitled to a US per diem as opposed to a Canadian one, that can be a fairly decent chunk of change if you end up doing uh, a number of US layovers during the month. So then we get to the last step and that would be verifying per diems on your flight summary. Just a reminder that flight summary is completely different to pay statement. Pay statements are accessible through HR Connects and also through the AC Life app, but flight summaries are only accessible via HR Connects. So you will need to go to HR Connects to pull up the detailed breakdown as far as your um, flights and then any of your crew cycle expenses is what your uh, meal allowances slash per diem show up under. I have taken a screenshot of the crew cycle expenses that uh, I was issued in connection to my pairing, and now we're going to verify them together. I have copied uh, specific parts of the meal allowances chart for December. I removed most of the other destinations so that you can easily read what the Canadian and the US rates are. In reality, of course, the meal allowances PDF has uh, many more destinations and uh, Canada and the US are spaced apart. 
I'd also like to add that you are entitled to a check-in and check-out per DM, and this is worth $5.05 for each eligible stay that you have at a um, layover hotel. And this is not the same as getting one for each night. For example, there are red-eye pairings from Vancouver to Toronto, where you may have uh, anywhere between 24 hours or even 30 plus hours for your layover. And that could involve um, two nights at the same hotel, but you would not get a check-in check-out per diem for each night. You would just get the one check-in check-out per diem for your stay. Article 7.04 in the collective agreement uh, says this in a little bit more technical language. You can see the exact verbiage I have uh, placed in this slide as well, just right around here. So now let's go through and check all of the uh, per diems just to make sure that I was paid them correctly on my flight summary. Let's get the check-in check-out out of the way first. So I had one two stays at a hotel during my pairing, and both of them are in excess of seven hours, which is the exact verbiage listed in Article 7.04. So I should be getting 5.05 .05 as a check-in check-out for each stay. You'll notice uh, in the check-in check-out column that uh, I have one amount for $10.10 listed right here. This ends up being the same thing. I would have preferred uh, just to make things a little bit more clean, that 5.05 .05 be here and 5.05 .05 be here to separate them by two nights. But I can tell you the logic as to why uh, they're combined together. You'll notice that uh, for the Vancouver Montreal leg that the arrival occurred after midnight in Montreal. So technically the arrival to the hotel was on December the 10th. And similarly, uh, for December the 10th, for Montreal to San Francisco, uh, the arrival at the San Francisco hotel was also on the 10th. So according to uh, the logic that the program uses to issue our per diems, they both occurred in two separate stays, but on the same calendar day, and that's why they're combined together. So you'll need to be mindful that sometimes uh, items will be combined based on the timing. Which will bring us to um, our next point. So we know that dinner was the first per diem we were entitled to on the 9th. So we are showing dinner here. Notice that there is no snack per diem showing on the 9th. And the reason for that is because the meal period for snacks uh, start in the evening on one day and end in the early morning hours on the next day. So the snack that we'd be entitled to for the period starting on the 9th ends on the 10th, and that's why the meal is showing down here on the 10th. So there's a, a little bit of a non-linear process. These two are connected to the first day. So I have been paid for both. That was a Canadian dinner and a Canadian snack. So now for December the 10th, we know that for every per diem, except for the snack per diem, that I was to be paid at the Canadian rate. So 1691, 1916 and 37.95 are all correct. And then if we look at the chart for December 2021, we can see that 1237 is the amount indicated for snacks for the US for December. And that is exactly what's showing here as well, except it is showing one line down. Again, because the snack meal period ends on a different day than it starts. 
So once again, it's not perfectly linear, but I have been paid the correct amounts on day two. And then finally, day three, December the 11th, uh, starts in San Francisco, goes back to Vancouver. And we determined that all three of those per diems were to be paid at the US rate. So breakfast is 21.10, lunch is 23.91, and dinner is 47.36 as per the meal allowances chart. And that is exactly what I'm showing in the cruise cycle expenses as well. So I have been paid correctly at the US rate for all three of those per diems. So there you have it. Um, I have been paid all of the per diems that I'm entitled to for the pairing in general. And then I've also been paid at the correct rate um, for each of those per diems. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.